the NFL may be a passing league, but this weekend when the Washington Commanders and Pittsburgh Steelers link up, the likelihood of the game being dictated on the ground is very, very high. That and more on today's crossover episode of Locked on Steelers and Locked on Commanders. You are Locked on NFL Crossover, part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome in, everybody, to today's Crossover Thursday episode of Locked on Commanders and Locked on Steelers, both shows part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm David Harrison. He is Chris Carter. We are the hosts of Locked on Commanders, Locked on Steelers, respectively, your daily podcast covering each of these illustrious NFL franchises. If you haven't already, you can subscribe for free on YouTube or wherever you are tuning in to today's episode, which we are going to share our three things that each team has to do in order to assure a victory coming up here in week 10. I can't believe we're already in week 10 of the NFL season. We're going to start off by talking about what's most important to the Steelers, what's most important with the Washington Commanders going on around there. Both teams active at the NFL trade deadline. How will those trades impact and shape this weekend's game? That's all coming up. Thanks to our friends over at Prize Picks Crossover Thursday presented by Prize Picks. Download the app. Use the code locked on NFL, all lowercase, to win $50 instantly when you play your first five dollars of course we thank you for coming through today if you're new to any program appreciate you coming through for the first time hopefully you like it you stick around every dayers you already know because we tell you every day but a special thank you to you for coming through all the time every time every day chris carter locked on steelers man i, I love uh doing episodes with you because you are truly one of the the best hosts here on the show i do locked on nfl every wednesday afternoon uh yeah man and i mean it with tony wiggins he dropped a clip uh, from the trade deadline uh, from, that you did for your Locked On Steelers uh, ah. uh, listeners. And it was it was fire, man. It's always fire. So I appreciate you uh, for, for doing this with me. And uh, what's going on with uh, with the Steelers, man? What's going on in Pittsburgh? Right now, the Steelers, uh, as, a, as a, you know, for Commanders fans that are familiar, they made two uh, depth moves that the Steelers did. And it wasn't blockbuster moves. They wasn't guys that are going to, you know, break – you know, break the mold, but Mike Williams, a deep threat receiver. And he talked about that today at the Steelers facility saying, Oh yeah, I'm excited to play with Russell Wilson and catch some of those moon balls. He's not going to be the number one wide receiver might be the number two wide receiver, but he gives the Steelers another outside threat like George Pickens, who Russell Wilson, he, he, he has a high yards per average or yards per yards per attempt, excuse me, uh, overall. And I, the, I think the best yards per attempt of any got person that's attempted at least 20 play action passes so far this season. And that's what the Steelers want to do. They want to hit you deep and then they want to run the ball and then they want to catch you and play action. And so that's what they're trying to hit. Mike Williams fits that piece of the puzzle for what they're trying to do on offense. Similarly, Preston Smith isn't the end all be all because they have their edge rushers. In fact, Nick Herbig's back to practicing this week. A good sign that he's going to be able to play again. TJ Watt, Alex Highsmith, your starters. Herbig's your solid three, but they wanted four. They had Marcus Golden in training camp. He was going to play for them. He retired mid training camp. They didn't really make a move after that. Preston Smith now is that fourth edge now, but he's also a more physical, bigger edge than Nick Herbig. And I think that's the thing here. Both these moves were puzzle pieces to the overall picture that the Steelers want to be right now. And that's a team that runs the ball well, hits you for big plays, puts you in guessing games on offense, and then plays tough, stymie in defense, which I think is going to be really interesting to to, to collide with the commanders who have been great at running the football to start this year. Yeah, man, you talk about guessing games, and I'm so glad you said that because that's going to come back here in today's crossover Thursday episode. Remember that, because that's going to come back in this episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah, man, I mean, I really dig Mike Williams. I really thought that, you know, I really thought that was going to do a lot, like a lot of people. I expect the Jets to be a lot better than they have been uh, so far this season. I really thought Mike Williams, once he was able to get his legs fresh and, and get going from, from recovering from that major injury, would be able to be a bigger part of that. Obviously, it didn't work out. And when you look at the Pittsburgh Steelers, man, you know, commanders, commanders, listeners, or a lot of commanders, listeners know this. We talked about this quite a few times throughout the season, starting off with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in week one, that really what, what scares me about this Washington Commanders defense this season are teams that have multiple weapons. And I'm not even talking like two weapons. I'm talking like three, four options. Uh, you know, Pat Fryer certainly is a guy that can have uh, uh, games that can really impact what goes on with the game flow. So I really like what the Steelers did from an outside NFL perspective. Clearly, would rather they held off for a week if it was possible. I know <laughs> it's not possible, but it would have been nice if they held off for a week. But, hey, you want to see teams at their best because if you can beat them at their best, then it means uh, a whole lot more. And then, of course, Preston Smith has history uh, in Washington. So there's a lot of people who have been Washington fans for a long time um, that, again, maybe not looking forward to see him coming back the way that he's coming back, but certainly a name that, that people 
uh, will will understand. Let's talk about that offense a little bit more. Let's let's get into that. what has been so effective about this offense this season. Because Dan Quinn, like you just mentioned, really went in depth and really praised Russell Wilson's uh, deep ball, and that is something that Jaden Daniels has done very very well. Uh, third right now, and 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 expected points added in his deep ball passing, according to uh, Zebra Sports Next Gen Stats, which is a great stat. But Russell Wilson, he, you know, in this matchup, he's the OG, right? He's been doing it for a minute. So what's been going on with that Steelers offense specifically that's been so successful, even though they've switched through quarterbacks? They're they're finding balance, and that's the thing, David, is that they are tr- they're hitting you in multiple ways. Arthur Smith knew the new offensive coordinator for the Steelers that came in this year for the Steelers offense to be good. It wasn't going to rely on one superstar. It wasn't going to rely on you know ex superstar quarterback play. It was going to be about hey. Najee Harris is a good running back. Jalen Warren's a good number two running back. This offensive line is decent. George Pickens is a serious threat, but maybe not like Justin Jefferson in, in that upper tier of guys just yet. Pat Frymuth is a really good tight end. So, hey, we got all these guys, and we got a speedster like Calvin Austin, a big dude like Darnell Washington. What if we combine all of them in ways that make you honor each of them, and you need a quarterback to conduct that offense? Now, for the first six games, Justin Fields did a good job protecting the football, using his legs and being part of that. But what Justin Fields couldn't do was he couldn't see the field consistently and distribute the football to all those different guys and and mix those weapons to the best of their potential. Russell Wilson in two games had started to do that and and, and do that more efficiently. I think he did it really well from like the later half of the second quarter in his first game on to the rest of the last game. And then against Mm -hmm. the Giants, he really had it like about the, there was about three possessions. They should have had touchdowns where things out of his control uh, just didn't work, work in their favor. Uh, but he's getting that. And that's, what's making it dangerous because now for years, I've said this for years, Najee Harris is the only running back to have a, th- a three straight thousand yard seasons in the last three years in the NFL. That shows his durability. But I've said for years, he's much better than just that because the Steelers offensive line was struggling and they had no serious passing game to worry about. So people weren't, we're, we're saying we're our priority is to stop Najee Harris. Don't let him get going. But now teams have to honor Najee Harris uh, honor the passing game. They have to honor other things in this offense. And that has forced teams to kind of leave away. And now you got three straight games oh. where Najee Harris has over a hundred rushing yards. And that's what makes this Steelers offense better this year. Yeah. And going up against Washington Bears run defense. Look, I mean, just the truth is being what it is. Rush defense has not been their strong suit uh, this season. Although I will tell you, Steelers fans, if you're just looking at that Giants game, you're like, look at all that production the Giants put up against the Washington Commanders defense. I will tell you, the second half, much less run game uh, production for the Giants in the first half. So there was mm-hmm. a, there were adjustments made. Now, some of that was game flow, too. The Giants had to pass more down multiple touchdowns, all that kind of stuff as well. So certainly layers of context, as there always is in the National Football League. But, but Chris, we got, of course, we got to talk about that defense. And, I mean, T.J. Watt, like if, if he's not the best pass rush in the National Football League, I don't know who is. Three and a half sacks against the NFC East so far, which hmm. – much more of an interesting stat than an actual Crazy. applicable stat to this game. It's not like, well, he got sacks against the Giants and Cowboys, so he's going to sack the Commanders. But this is not really how this works. But three and a half sacks in two games against the NFC East, nonetheless, kind of just illustrates how good TJ Watt is. The Washington Commanders uh, have been doing a lot of chip blocking. It's something that I went really in depth with last week going up against that Giants pass rush. Mm-hmm. TJ Watt's going to see a lot of chip blocks in this game. I wouldn't be surprised if he gets chipped on every single play. Is that going to be enough, though? to stop TJ. And even if it is, is dedicating that many resources to TJ Watt going to impact what the Steelers are able to do on, on around him? I'm glad you brought that up because the Steelers are starting to counter that a little bit. And I broke that down after the Giants game. I went back in the Giants game. There were four times. Typically, TJ Watt lines up over the right tackle, Alex Highsmith over the left. That is just the rule. That is the law. In the Giants game, four times they flipped sides. And that may not sound sound like a lot, but if you go back the rest of this season, the rest of the the all of 2023, the all of 2022 and the all of 2021, the last three seasons, plus the first eight games combined for the Steelers, seven games combined for the Steelers. He had four times that they flipped before that. So in that one game and I asked Alex Highsmith, hey, was that part of the plan? And he was like, oh, yes, we've noticed everyone's chipping TJ now with a tight end and extra alignment and a running back. So what we're doing is. We're going to move him around. And in the game, if you go back and you look at the highlights of that Giants game, the game, the, the, the play where he sacked Daniel Jones, ripped the ball out, picked it up himself, they left him in single. Why? They forgot to check into it. And so what they're going to try to do to Jaden Daniels in this game is they're going to be flipping TJ a lot. And now with Preston Smith, if he's active enough for this game and they have all four of their guys, 
they're going to do that with all with all four of them. And I think there's going to be some sets where they have three men at the same time that are outside linebackers and moving around. And it's going to mm-hmm. force the commander's offense to communicate. Where is 90? Where is 90? And if you're doing that, oftentimes you can some you can be there, be there and be. But sometimes you overcorrect and then you forget. Oh, wait a minute. Cam Hayward's going up a gap. That's what the Steelers yeah. want to create. They want to create confusion. And Mike Tomlin said on Tuesday, hey, we didn't get to do that a lot in the first half of the season because for about four weeks, they were missing Alex Highsmith. For another three three weeks, they are missing Nick Herbig. So they didn't even have their top three guys. Now they'll have those top three and Preston Smith. And I foresee a pass rush that's going to be more complex than what we've even seen to start this season from the Steelers. Yeah, a lot of challenges up front for the Washington Commanders, not just quarterback Jane Daniels with center Tyler Biosh on communication. Uh, you know, rookie left tackle Brandon Coleman. He's he's stood up to some challenges. Miles Garrett, Brian Burns. But this unit, I mean, T.J. Watt, I think I put T.J. Watt above both those guys. But then this unit as a whole, I think, is the best pass rush unit uh, talent wise that they've, they're going to see all season long. So we'll see how the Washington Commanders front can stand up. But the Washington Commanders also have some things that they can try to unleash against this Pittsburgh Steelers team. We're going to get more into that coming up next on today's Crossover Thursday episode of Locked On Steelers, Locked On Commanders, part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's crossover episode is brought to you by Z Biotics. And by going to zbiotics.com slash locked on NFL, you can get in on the product presented by one of our newest sponsor, pre alcohol probiotic drink by Z Biotics. It's the world's first genetically engineered probiotic. It was invented by PhD scientists to tackle rough mornings after drinking. So here's how it works how it works when you drink, alcohol gets converted into a toxic byproduct in your guts. It's this byproduct, not dehydration. That's the blame for your rough next day. Pre-alcohol produces an enzyme to break this byproduct down. Just remember to make Z-Biotics your first drink of the night. Drink responsibly, and you'll feel your best in the morning. So step one, drink pre-alcohol for your best result. Make pre-alcohol your first drink of the night. Step two, drink responsibly. Pace yourself, hydrate, get a good night's sleep. Step three, enjoy the next day. Wake up feeling refreshed and ready to take on your day. Go to zbiotics.com slash locked on NFL to learn more and get 15% off your first order when you use locked on NFL at checkout. Zbiotics is backed with a 100% money back guarantee. So if you're unsatisfied for any reason, they'll refund your money. No questions asked. Remember to head to zbiotics.com slash locked on NFL. Use the code locked on NFL at checkout for 15% off. If you ask me, the Pittsburgh Steelers, quite honestly, are the toughest matchup the Washington Commanders are going to face all season mm-hmm. long. And, and that, of course, is putting some things into perspective. But the Baltimore Ravens certainly uh, in that caliber as well. But when you put together the talent and you put together the way that the, the season is going for these two teams, Pittsburgh Steelers certainly seem to be rolling. So we're going to flip over now to the Washington Commanders and talk about what they have going on with them. And Chris, offensively, I'm going to give you kind of the quick crib notes on both sides of this thing, but offensively, Brian Robinson Jr., the running back, what we want is a great Alabama back in Najee Harris going up against a great Alabama back in Brian Robinson Jr. Unfortunately, depending on the status of Brian Robinson Jr.'s hamstring, we may or may not get that. There's a lot of layers to that conversation as well uh, that go into whether or not he plays this weekend. But the Washington Commanders offense, quite simply, not the same offense when Brian Robinson Jr. isn't on the field. And then defensively, obviously, the storyline of the week is the addition of Marshawn Lattimore coming in. The unfortunate part is he's also got a hamstring injury, and that is something that Adam Peters, the general manager, head coach Dan Quinn, addressed uh, on Wednesday as we also got to meet Marshawn Lattimore for the first time. And and bluntly, basically just said, look, we're going to approach the Marshawn Lattimore injury just like we're going to approach any other injury, and that is conservatively. If they don't believe Marshawn Lattimore can be 100% himself, they're not going to put him on the field. That's how they've operated with Jaden Daniels. All of these other players that have been banged up and nicked up It's led Brian Robinson to miss two games. Uh, already this season so that is how Dan Quinn is going to operate he's not going to risk the entirety of the rest of the season for a player or even their career future to get one win even if it would be a very big win from a morale standpoint power rankings Washington Commanders would jump up Uh, obviously if you're able to beat a Pittsburgh Steelers team it's not worth it he would much rather wait and have those guys back for January hopefully into February right so we'll have to see but quite honestly, Chris, I'm, I'm telling you, my gut right now says you're probably not going to see Marshawn Lattimore and you might not see Brian Robinson Jr. And certainly that's going to impact the way that these things go uh, for the commanders and Steelers this weekend. 
those are two big blows. I mean, when 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 I saw the Commanders get Marshawn Lever, I was like, "Oh, dang, that's crazy, bro!" And I, you know, and a lot of Steelers fans were like, "Yeah, the Ravens didn't." Oh, wait, they're next up on the list. Crap. <laughs> and so, like, it was kind of like, "Well, at least the Ravens didn't get them, but now you still got to go." Yeah. But maybe you don't. Maybe you don't. The injury that'd be huge. But still, this is a defense that I think still has a lot of interesting parts to it. You got a young guy like Jerzon Newton, uh, you know, a guy, an experienced guy yeah. like Deron Payne. They're gonna be they're gonna be bringing up front. Bobby Wagner's there, like. Yeah, the the commanders have struggled against the run, but I think that if you can if you can try to hit the Steelers early, try to get them off rhythm and take away some of the throws that just uh, excuse me, that I, I, I'm going to keep calling Justin Wilson or Russell Fields, but uh, <laughs> you know, but Russell Wilson, if you can keep him from hitting some of those those early shots where he likes to try to set up easier plays, that's how you can knock them off off rhythm. Um, and, and get things going. And like, you know, I like guys like Jeremy Chin. I like guys that can be smart uh, in the field. It's going to be take, it's going to be about trying to read those keys, see where the play action is being set up and getting in the right spots to make those contested on the flip side. You know, one thing that the Steelers have run up against when they've struggled defensively the most, uh, you know, I think, you know, last, last game, they struggled to stop the run a little bit against the giants, but I think that was, a, there were a couple structural things that got in the way there. But the biggest thing that I've seen that has, been a theme that if they don't correct it could be a larger problem this year is communication over the middle on defense with their zones and, and because there's a lot of times where a guy will run with the wrong person a guy will will cover will, will look at the wrong way and they'll give up leverage and then yeah, that allows a veteran quarterback or a rookie quarterback who's who's feeling it at that point in time to hit mm-hmm. their guys get the right read and if you read the right keys they'll be open that's what happened in the Colts game that's what happened in the late in, in late in the Cowboys game if the Steelers run into that if Jaden Daniels can force that out of this offense that might negate not having uh Brian Robinson because Austin Eckler is still a bad man like you know that that, that guy yeah, there's a lot of respect put that respect on that man's name uh but the Steelers are very aware of guys like Terry McLaurin gonna gonna you know having a chance to eat them up. They know they played they played Zach Ertz before. They know what he what he mm-hmm. can do to you. So I think this will come down to can the Steelers defense get back to communicating at a high level like they have been when they played their best games and say, hey, Jaden Daniels, you're gonna have to throw some elite passes into some tight zones consistently to move the ball down the field because a they don't want to let you run the football and then b they don't want to give you the big plays where you're where you're getting the chunks out of them. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and that's something that the Washington Commanders, even when they're not necessarily having Brian Robinson, that type of type of uh, element to their offense, losing a little bit of that power. Austin Eckler, certainly for those who haven't seen Austin Eckler play in a little while, he still has a good amount of strength. I think his strength is a little bit underrated uh, part of his game. And the Washington Commanders still certainly I mean, they're, thir- they're the third best team in the NFL in scoring right now. That doesn't happen just because of one person. So even mm-hmm. though Brian Robinson is a big part of this team and certainly you know, if you ask Jaden Daniels, what does it mean if you don't have him and you know, all those things? He'll acknowledge how great he is, but he also understands, like you just mentioned, there are plenty of playmakers on this team. So while we talk about the Pittsburgh Steelers having two, three, four guys that can hurt you, the Washington Commanders, uh, somewhat quietly, to be quite honest with you, surprisingly enough, but like Noah Brown, not a lot of people are really talking about him. Uh, mm-hmm. Ben Sinnott has gotten his moments here and there to make some really good plays. Luke McCaffrey, the rookie wide receiver, is getting opportunities to make specific key plays on like third downs to convert and all that stuff. But you look at... Last week against the New York Giants defense, no Brian Robinson Jr. The run game certainly wasn't amazing in the first half, but still able to put up points on three of their first four drives. Most importantly, able to put up three touchdowns in their first four drives. And like you said, Chris, that really starts to dictate what the opposing offense can do. And when you look at the mm-hmm. Pittsburgh Steelers not averaging as many points, it's hard to average as many points as a team that's up there in the top three uh, of the league. So if they can get in their own way a little bit here and there, maybe help out the Washington Commanders defense, but also the Commanders defense, uh, if they can force some field goals, take advantage of some mistakes and some opportunities, force a three and out here and there. If you can dictate that part of the game and put the Pittsburgh Steelers into more predictable situations, obviously that's going to help any defense. And I think when you look at the Commanders where they've gotten a lot better is their sack rate. And right now their Mm. sack rate is top 10 in the NFL. They're going on about 3.3 sacks per game starting in week three weeks one and two they had one per game exactly they only had two sacks one in each game since then they're coming with over three per game that sack rate has gone up exponentially and something they've been done a really good job of against mobile quarterbacks or quarterbacks that can move like russ is keeping him in the pocket keep him in the pocket allow him to basically run himself into the pressure or allow that second level pressure to get home chris an adjustment that the commander's defense made last week against the run that i really enjoyed Initially, against Tyrone Tracy Jr., Devin Singletary, and even Daniel Jones, who broke a big one early, initially they were having their front line basically kind of hold the line, hold the point of attack, read the run, 
try to make a move on whatever direction was going. Can, and they were living on the second level defenders to try to create the chaos in the backfield, right? Second half, they come out much more first level defenders are basically hitting pass rush moves, even on run play. So you're just constantly pass rushing. There was a defensive line coach. I can't remember his name anymore. You say run defense is what happens when you're, while you're rushing the quarterback. That's essentially the mode they went into is their defensive line was not trying to hold the line. No, they're trying to get in the backfield. And then the second level defenders would take advantage of the chaos that that penetration was causing. Specifically, you mentioned Johnny Newton, the rookie out of Illinois. And I think that if they can execute that type of a game plan against Pittsburgh Steelers, even against their run game, get some early penetration from Johnny Newton, Deron Payne, Dorrance Armstrong, Dante Fowler, and then let their second level defenders like Bobby Wagner, Frankie Lou, and Jeremy Chin when he comes down to the box clean up. I think that's the recipe uh, to trying to stifle what the, what the Pittsburgh Steelers can do within the box. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be about trying to find those, those those spaces where you can get guys. You can stymie me the, the Steelers push. The Steelers want to be physical. They want to push you back. They want to they want to change the line of scrimmage and they want to make it so that their guys are making the decisions at the line of scrimmage, not your guys. Absolutely. So some good stuff from the Pittsburgh Steelers. Good stuff from the Washington Commanders side of this thing. But there are three things specifically that each team has to do in order to get the dub this week. And we're going to tell you what those three things are coming up next on today's crossover Thursday episode. Locked on Steelers and Locked on Commanders. That's in there because there were guys like a lot of times you could see like Jeremiah Moon, a practice squad. Today's crossover episode is also brought to you in part by FanDuel. Get ready to tackle the NFL action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers can bet $5, get $150 in bonus bets if you win. The FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place your live bets on the NFL all in one place. So when you're watching a game, any game in the National Football League, you get a hunch in the middle of that game, whether it be team-related, game-related, or player-related, you can check out the latest stats, view the play-by-play, and so much more on the exact same page where you can place your bets. Of course, you can also make your pregame bets like taking the Washington Commanders, who are three-point favorites at home against Pittsburgh Steelers this weekend, or bet against that line if you feel it's going to go that way. Whatever you want to do, just go to FanDuel.com to join today. You'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins, that's FanDuel.com. Never waste a hunch and make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports book partner of the National Football League. Today's crossover Thursday episode of Locked On Commanders, Locked On Steelers, also brought to you by Prize Picks. And with Prize Picks, you can now win up to 100 times your money with as little as four correct picks. Prize Picks is the best way to get in on the action on sports in over 30 states, including California, Florida, Georgia, and Texas. So sign up today and you'll get $50 instantly when you play $5. You don't even have to win to receive the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed with your, with your $5 play. So if you go there, you look at the player stats, if you think they're going to get more than those player stats, less than those projected stats, you build your team of two to six players, and again, with as little as four correct players, you can win up to 100 times your money. So cook up your hot takes with your friends and win real money this football season when you and your crew run your game on Prize Picks. Download the app today. Use the code Locked On NFL to get fifty dollars instantly after you play your first five dollar lineup with Prize Picks. Run your game. This week's crossover Thursday episode of Locked On Steelers, Locked On Commanders, brought to you by Prize Picks. And Chris, let's jump right into it, man. What are the three things the Pittsburgh Steelers must do in order to get this road victory? Field goal underdogs, by the way. This this road victory on Sunday. Yeah, it went up from two and a half points to a whole field goal. Uh, it's been yeah. slowly moving in the way of the commanders throughout the week. But uh, first thing, and you know, I, I say this almost every week, you got to make them one dimensional. The Steelers' entire defensive philosophy is about we're going to take away the run so that we can put you in predictable passing situations so that TJ Watt and Alex Highsmith and Cam Hayward and now Nick Herbig and Preston Smith, all these guys, they're coming for you, and you, you're going to have maybe two to three seconds to get that ball off. And we're going to trust that our coverage behind it can create some schemes that will confuse you. Or if you try to rush the throw, we'll be in position to make the interception and, and create turnover plays. That's the first key there. Stuff the runs so you can put yourself in that situation. Second key, protect Russell Wilson back there. Like you were talking about getting at, getting after him and trying to get that. Broderick Jones has been struggling. The first round pick from last year, he's been struggling in pass protection with his hands. If, if I'm the Steelers, I'm doing everything I can to make sure that he is not killing Russell Wilson and killing drives by giving up pressures in, in this game. The Steelers expect to get center Zach Frazier 
major back for this game. He's their starter. He's their second round pick this year. He's been phenomenal when he's been healthy. And I think that, that you know, that's somewhere they can trust. But if I'm looking for anything, if I'm the, if I'm the commanders, I'm trying to circle Broderick Jones. If I'm the Steelers, I'm saying we are protecting Russell Wilson. And then the, th- the third thing here is get Najee Harris going. Because when you get Najee Harris going – it creates so many problems for the Steelers. And, and I think that's a byproduct of Russell Wilson having time to throw the ball because then he'll hit some passes. But if you get going and against this commander's defense that has struggled against the run, you grind clock, you force more pressure on Jaden Daniels, that offense to figure things out. And then you also build that rhythm for the more play action passes where you'll be able to strike more. And then if you're also running the ball, when you get inside the red zone, you won't have to rely on Van Jefferson sitting in the right spot. You won't have to rely on George Pickens tapping his right foot twice versus getting his right and his left foot down at the same time. You'll just be able to run the ball uh, well and get into the end zone the old-fashioned way so uh th- th- those are the main things you gotta a stuff to run make make it about Jaden daniels being one-dimensional in predictable situations um to uh protect russell wilson keep, uh, especially on the broderick jones side of things and and then three get Najee harris going they do those three things i like their chances in this game what are three keys to the commanders yeah, man. I think first of all, they got to find their run game. Uh, even if you don't have Brian Robinson Jr., which I will admit to everybody here, Commanders fans, we're going to talk about a little bit more on our final episode of the week. I'm being a little bit more cautious. We'll, we'll use a nice word for myself, and I'm going to say cautious about Brian Robinson Jr. because they have mm-hmm. Philadelphia on Thursday night following the Pittsburgh Steelers game. So if if I'm being a little cautious, there would be Rob. That's going to be why. But you also don't have Chris Rodriguez. Chris Rodriguez is basically the other power back that the Washington Commanders have on the roster. He's a practice squad player. He's already been called up three times, which means if they need to use him again, they got to sign him to the active roster, which means we're releasing a player that I don't know that they're going to want to go ahead and release. So if you don't have Chris Rodriguez, you don't have Brian Robinson Jr., you still got to find a way to at least make the running game, keep the Steelers defense honest too, open up some of those middle of the field lanes uh, and try to create some of that confusion like Chris was talking about before. Number two, I told you this was going to come back. Sleight of hand offense that Arthur Smith is running with the Pittsburgh Steelers. I watched every single explosive play that this Steelers offense has gained this hmm. season, and almost all of them involve the Steelers tricking a defender into getting out of his lane. I'm talking about I'm watching cover three corners who are supposed to be in a perimeter third in their zone in the middle of the stinking field following a motion that they should not be following and the Pittsburgh Steelers taking an easy completion or lane and saying, thank you for that wide open third of the field, my friend. We will take all of them yards right there. Discipline, discipline, discipline. Mike Tomlin uh, just has a history. I know Arthur Smith is the off but like, but Mike Tomlin teams know how to make you look foolish. Do not get out of position on defense. Please, dude. It reminds me, I don't remember the name, that magic movie where all like they were, they're robbing everybody with all their magic. That's what it reminds me of is the Steelers are just going to steal all your yards with their sleight of hand. Don't, don't do it. Fans can watch the ball. Defenders, watch your assignments. Uh, and then finally, adopt the Marshawn Lattimore mentality. Look, I don't know if Marshawn's going to be on the field this weekend. We'd love to see him on the field if they can get him out there this weekend. But it's not just the, the hamstring. It's communication. How fast can he get Were up you on talking the about now you see me? Yes, that's the movie okay, I'm talking about. Now you like, see what movies he- <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> one, of the things, one of the things that Dan Quinn talked about Marshawn Lattimore was his willingness and ability to compete close up i'm talking about stepping up and dan quinn goes back to atlanta right julio jones getting right up in his grill and competing mm-hmm. close quarter combat with one of the best receivers in the nfl at the time that is marshall Lattimore. that's the dog in him that makes him as good as he is adopt that mentality as a secondary don't just let these Steelers wide receivers run around and try to get their routes on you try to get their stems and their breaks and just hope that you can be better on the read go out there have that dog mentality even if 23 is not on the field Adopt the Marshawn Lattimore mentality. Those are the three things, Chris, I think the commanders have to do to secure that three-point or better win this weekend against the Pittsburgh Steelers. And, of course, Chris Carter locked on Steelers, David Harrison locked on Commanders. We're going to have much more on this game before kickoff actually happens. So make sure you're checking out both locked on Steelers, locked on Commanders. We thank you for coming through today. Every dayers, thank you for coming through every day. For your next listen, check out the all-new Locked On NFL. It's twice per day. You got your madman Tyler rolling in the morning. You got the barbershop vibes with Tony Wiggins for some real NFL talk in the afternoon. Until we see you again, if you're out about, please be safe, be kind. We'll see you next time right back here for both shows, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.